Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started there, shall we? Um, Shree Nair is, uh, what, an associate professor over in uh, the School of Mass Science and Engineering, where she teaches um, physics. And she's going to be talking to us today, today about uh, the calendar and email in Canvas. So she is one of our piloteers. So Sri, let's give it to you. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm Sri, as you already said everything. Um, so I'm so excited to show you a couple of things that I know can relate you. So let me share the screen with you first. Can y'all see it? Can y'all see the screen? Okay. Cool. Um, this is how my course looks like for the semester. And I'm gonna just walk you through uh, to email, um, otherwise called inbox uh, and Canvas and also calendar. Um, so email option in Canvas is called inbox and it is in the global navigation. So just let's click inbox. And then in the inbox screen, there are actually three different things you need to know. This is the, um, what is it called? I forgot its name. One second. Uh, conversation panel. And then this is the conversation thread. And here is the toolbar. So three different things. Conversation panel is a whole thing. If I click an email from the conversation thread, that particular email will be displayed and I can select whichever I want to. Um, show you. So here are two emails. So if I wanna send a reply to a particular email, I just have to click the reply. I'll show it to you just in a little bit, but I just wanted to show you, this is how the email will appear. Um, and um, by default, um, in the inbox, all the emails are from the newest to oldest manner. So here is my newest email I received. That means I don't receive a lot of emails. That's cool. Um, um, <clears throat> and I can change the way the emails appear, or I can just sort particular emails from a specific class. So this is all my emails from Genophysics 1 class, or I can go check my modern physics class emails like that. So I can check or I can just arrange everything based on the way I want it to be. And then I can just see all the emails or I can sort out uh, the unread emails. I, have, I don't have any unread emails. If I star any emails, they will all appear here. And if there are any archived emails, they will appear here. And submission comments, this is really cool. So for any particular assignment, when you grade, and if you enter a comment um, or the student replies to you, they all will appear here as well. So you can just look at that particular comment and then respond from the inbox instead of going to a specific assignment and then comment under there. So that was a cool thing. That is a cool thing. Uh, okay. Going back here, um, this is the compose email and I'm gonna just choose one email so that I can activate all buttons. So this is the compose new message button and this one is reply and this one is reply all and this one is for archiving a particular message and this is for a delete. Once you delete, you cannot retrieve those messages but once you archive, you can go back here, drop down the menu, and then go to archive, and then you can retrieve all the archived messages from here. And more options for if I say, if I choose this particular message, if I wanna forward it to somebody else, um, I can say, so, sorry, this student is not in my class, so I cannot but I can go to the address book in general physics one, um, select all my students, maybe all students or a particular student, and then send it or forward it like that. 
or I can star that message, or I can even unread, mark it unread. So whatever message is unread, it'll come with a red button here. Uh, okay, in order to compose a new email, I have to select a course from my favorite courses. By default, all the courses that I teach this semester appear to be the favorite courses and then it'll change next semester. John Physics 1, and then um, if I know my student's name, I just click, or if I don't know my student, um, student's name, and then I go click here, um, select a student, or I can go to all my students, so I don't even have to have this, I can send it to all my students and then type the subject name. Um, reminder, assignment reminder, or whatever. And if you want, you can send as like an individual message to each recipient if you prefer to be that way. Or it'll just go to like addressing the entire class and then type in your message right here and then click send. But if you have an attachment, click the attachment here and then it'll go, um, you know, ask for the particular folder, whatever. And if you have a media that you wanna do or you wanna record or you wanna take a picture or you wanna record a video like that, or you can upload media. Select a particular file or select a video, audio, whatever it is. And then click the send button. If you change your mind, you can always cancel and go back or just simply close uh, the window. So since I made this as unread, now I get a reminder that there's one unread email. Okay. I don't have any more unread email, so it should disappear. Anyway. That's what about email. Do you have any question? I have a question. This is kind of cool. I didn't even know I did, you know, this was <laughs> a thing. So if students send an email, it'll also show up on my Outlook email. Uh -huh. um, Very cool. UAW email. Um, okay. In beginning I used to get it in the spam but now I get everything in my inbox email so I think you can change the filter or change the option and okay. I receive everything in my UAW Outlook messages as well or oh. the, the, yeah okay do we know how long um, the emails are kept in the inbox in Canva like is there retention That's time in Canva question it, it I think it stays forever none of my emails were expired so far and I, because uh, canvas is a cloud setting so those emails as far as I understand they don't expire and I can only email students in my course I uh -huh. can't email people outside uh, no, yeah right thank you okay I have a little question Shri uh, so let's say I want to send a little nudging email to somebody who hasn't been in class for a couple of days. And actually, let's say I got two or three of these people. Can I do the same email to everybody? And will, uh, and will they not realize that other people are getting that email? Or do I need to do separate emails? Oh, no, they, uh, they will not know who else is in the recipient. Um, Wonderful. Thank you. It'll just be like a general message. Even if you click send it as a separate email to recipient. They will not see who, who else. So I send it to Johnny, Billy, and Celeste, and each of them will think they're getting their one and only email from me. They won't know I'm nagging two other people. No, no, no. Good. Very private content. And that's one thing I really like about it. like Melissa was saying, this is pure white. And that's another thing I like about it. Very creative, not very noisy. Um, transfer.
Michael Talent's got a, a question in the chat about having two sections of the same course. Um, can you send the same email to both classes with one email or do you have to do that separately? Um, it looks like at a time we can choose only one class but what you can do is you can create a group if you want to and then have all the students in that particular group and then go from there and yeah. then uh, you can just select the students from that particular group and then go from there But if you select from the class, you can select only one student. I mean, only one course at a time. Did I answer the question? And then I'll just add on to that. So if you, the sections will come in as, uh, as separate courses, kind of like what Shri is saying. Um, but if you merge them, you merge your sections into one course, then you would just, you'd be able to do one email. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that was really useful, helpful for me as a commissioner. Because last semester when I taught two different sessions of the same class, they appeared as two different sessions. But this time when I taught two <coughs> of each group, um, that was Kathy's idea, I guess. It was really helpful. Um, she merged the two sessions into one, so I don't have to go back and forth between the two sessions. I can just but and also creating assignments. I can I can assign assignments to a particular group belonging to one class. And then to the other class, another assignment. It was very helpful. And please keep it up like that. I don't want it to be changed. Well, Shri, I'd just like to report that you're the only person who got who I'm getting positive feedback on that uh -huh. idea. Everybody else hated it. <laughs> so they are going to come in as two, two separate. Yeah. The sections will come in as two separate courses, like they do on Blackboard. But but faculty can merge them. Okay. Yeah. And Michael Talon wants to know how to do that. Is that something that's quick and dirty, something that could get explained after the session, or um, you should uh, contact one of you guys later? It's quick and dirty. It's quick and it's, dirty, but we can we can also um, Michael contact us. We'll, we'll we'll get we'll get some resources to you, and then put it on the website. It's okay. quick and neat, not quick and dirty. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. As I, I, I second a, 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 a session on sections, <laughs> but I, I have a question and I've, I've, re, I've reached out to Kathy and Terry. And, um, so when you merge, can I still send individual messages or post individual materials? To, so if I wanted to like, if I wanted to do something, post something separately to one of my merged sections, can I do that? Or once it's merged, they're all one. Whatever email I send to one, everybody gets it. Oh, actually, I see all my students in two different sessions all merged here. Okay. So, yeah. So they all get it. Right. They all will get it. Oh. So Canvas, you can send to entire class as well as sections. All right, thanks. Melissa, I'm going to be calling you. Just want to give you a heads up. <laughs> I'll be here. Thank you. <laughs> and nice to meet you, Ed. I'm Addie. I'm in pharmacy. Addie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Okay, Sri, I hear the calendar is pretty spectacular. Are you going to introduce us to it? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> this is how my calendar looks like. It's uneventful, not a lot of things. Uh, but one cool thing I wanted to show you right here uh, this is the quick calendar view. You can see the particular month um, and you see all these boxed because I, had cre I have created events like what you see the office hours. Um, that's how they look boxed. 
and I have different colors for my different courses. So if you want to change the color, it's very easy. Just go click the three buttons there, the three dots there, and then I don't know, it's not working, no. Okay, mm -hmm. come back. <clears throat> I already showed, yeah, here. And then change the particular color and that color code will reflect here. So whenever you have a student or whenever you have a particular event or assignment for a specific class, that particular color code will be displayed. So you will know which class assignment or which class event or appointment are you're looking for. Um, so to see it like a week basis, or a month basis, or if you have agenda in a chronological order, that is also available. And I usually go by the month view so that I can see the whole month in here. And in order to create something, you can create an event or you can create assignment or my to-do, that means my personal calendar. I don't have my personal calendar merged in here, but you can do that as well. And, or you can create an appointment group. That's specifically for office hours. That's, that's my huge thing um, to create an appointment group. So in order to create an event, um, you know, if you have a class seminar or um, any one hour or two hour, whatever it is, if you wanna create something like that, just type in the particular name of the event and then you can choose your day and time, <clears throat> location, and submit that and it'll appear in your class. Um, and whichever course you want to create it for and choose that course. So, and you see the color code already changed to purple. That means it'll display in the calendar like that it is. And if you want to create, <laughs> that's a cool thing. If you want to write something about it, um, any description, um, or if you want to choose another date, location, address, this is the cool thing. You can duplicate it um, every week or every month or every day um, in every two days or whatever it is and um, how many more occurrences you have to create. And then you can create that particular event. So that is one thing to create an event in a calendar. Or <clears throat> I don't do this normally. I usually go to the course assignment and create assignment. But I know that a lot of people um, rely on calendar to create an assignment. Uh, once you create an assignment in the calendar, you don't have to recreate it um, in the assignment. It'll already be appearing in the gradebook. It will be appearing in the assignment group and whichever it is. And you create this particular assignment um, and whichever group. Um, so I can show you my assignment group, like exam one or exam two, exam three, whichever group you want that particular assignment to be, you choose that. And then you can choose your calendar to a particular course. And once you have your details, you can publish. Uh, but before that, um, you may need to go back to more options and you can generate points or you can have assignment groups here, display grade as points. You all know this, I hope, or you will be learning the assignment uh, specifics from some other session, but I just wanted to show it to you whatever submission type you prefer um, and all these things, you know, just pick whichever that fits within your course requirement and then available from which day, what time, until what time, and then what is the due date and save and publish. I go to my assignment section and create all these things, but it is very cool that you can really create this in your calendar and that's one thing really helpful if you have everything in your um, cell phone 
um, and this is a cloud setup. So you go to your Canvas app and go to Canvas calendar and then create everything and you know, like it's all done. It's very easy. <clears throat> and once you create it, make sure you save and publish so that your students will be able to see. <laughs> and the last option is appointment group. Um, this is very helpful um, for office hours. So if I say office hours um, in the location, I usually, I mean, for our particular semester, I just provide them with my Zoom invitation, ID, um, and everything. And then I can, here, the good thing is you can select all the courses all the courses that you teach so that you don't have to regenerate it for each specific course. And um, due date, sorry, date, um, I'm gonna say, okay, Tuesday. And then time range, um, 2 p.m. until uh, 3 p.m. And what I do is to make it as 15 minutes of time blocks, but you really have to make sure that you click the go button and then you see four different blocks within one hour. So each block can be allotted to each student and make sure if you prefer each slot to one user. And your, if you choose, your student can see who has signed up um, or what else is still available. And if the class is really crowded and if you have a lot of students coming into sessions and if you want to restrict your time slot per day, it's like one student entry, they cannot come back for the day, but they can absolutely come back the next day. You have to click that limit participant to attend one appointment per day and then you publish. And um, this one, I tried, I cannot duplicate it because I have the time slot. So I really have to come back and then recreate it for every day. Um, but you know, I may have to talk to the Canvas people and see if I can duplicate this as well. Once I have the time slot, it's really difficult to duplicate. I have to come back and recreate it. But this one thing, I, I thought it's really helpful. So when I publish it, <laughs> Taking forever. But it'll appear in my canvas calendar. And um, now this is kind of uh, gray or, you know, unprojected. So then my students um, book their appointment. This will be more intense in color and they will stand out. So I know that somebody has picked that particular time. And then I'll know, and it'll also appear in my calendar. And also, one another thing I want to tell you, when you create an assignment, it'll automatically appear in your calendar and in your student's calendar as well. So they know that they have a due date. And that is more helpful for you know faculty that create online assignments. Um, and I don't do that a lot. Um, I prefer, you know, like within that particular time frame, they submit their exam. But if you have um, other ways of assignments, um, and if you already created in the beginning of the semester, and it's all available, your students will be able to see each particular due date in their calendar. And I thought it was really cool and convenient. Sri, I got a quick question. So. Um... Let's say um, rather than a hard and fast due date, I'm gonna take uh, an assignment and it, let's say from the fifth to the seventh. How does that show up on the calendar? Say that one more time. So if I'm gonna uh, have, let's say rather than one due date, mm -hmm. I might say, I'll take this assignment between the fifth and the seventh of March. Um, How would that show up on my calendar? So then, um, You have to, I think there is only one option. I don't oh, know. only one. Okay, so you can't do a range. Right. Okay, good. Uh, 
So maybe you have to enter the uh, the due date that you know, like five to seven, March five to seven, and then you may have to enter that as March seven. And okay. you can make it clear in the description that okay. And you can also do this as open, available from March third. And so choose that. And with the time, and this is very tricky. Um, you cannot change your time here. It'll not recognize, so you have to enter the time right here and mm -hmm. then say done. And then uh, select your um, available from to two. So if you say March 7, so students know that it's available from March 3rd to 7, but it'll end by whatever time you. That would do what I want it to do. Thanks a lot, Shri. And that's all I have for a calendar. Addie asked a question that I was in, interested in the answer to. Uh, she said, any assignments that are created inside of Canvas, are they populated to the calendar automatically? Yes. Nice. Yeah, it's like both ways. And if you sync your calendar with your cell phone, um, your personal calendar, I don't do that because I don't want to see many things in my my calendar. That will just panic me. So <laughs> I don't merge my calendars. You know, they're all different things. But so you could merge your this with your, let's say, your Outlook calendar if you wanted to? I, I think so. But I haven't looked at that option. I can look at it for the next session and then talk more about it. But um, here, <clears throat> you can do the calendar feed, I guess. Copy this app mm -hmm. that it takes, and then click into whatever calendar feed you want to. But I haven't. I, it really like scares me. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have a question. Do you find it's easier for students to use the mailbox or the inbox within the course than it is to use, yeah, uh, to start out in Outlook? Yeah, I, I, I love, because it's just yeah. less, less, <clears throat> my students really like it. They don't want to go to Outlook because they are already in Canvas and they are looking at the course uh, documents or something. They're already in Canvas. They are looking at it. And when they have a question, they just simply type in there and it'll come to me and, you know, like in the last semester, when Canvas is not available, I had to rely on other external apps where students can send me messages in my phone without knowing the phone number. But that was a pain because, you know, like you never know when you get the chat message. But this one is like, make me more ready because it's something related to my course and then I know who is sending it and which course material and what they're talking about. So that there's questions are specific and they feel um, under less pressure. And it's already there. They don't have to go back and check some other external tool to message. So they really liked it. It, get, it looks like I get more emails. And um, with the chat facility, uh, the thing is they tend to chat with me. Okay. Really like, hey, blah, blah, blah. But when they have to send an email, they know how to send an email. Otherwise, I have to talk to them. Mm -hmm. I prefer that. I don't want my students to like chat, but yeah. rather they send a mail. OK, thank you. Sri, is there anything that students need to know about using the calendar? Uh, no, they, I mean, if we give them permission to create things, then they need to know. But they just, they are automatically by default going to see everything in their calendar. So if I go to a particular class <clears throat> and click the student view, um, oh, I can't see the calendar from there. But let me see. Yeah. So they know that their exam is available, one exam will be available here, another exam will be available here. So they cannot make any change, but they can see all every assignments posted or all deadlines and everything like that. 
And the uh, if they uh, so if they're in five courses, does all of their work show up on the same calendar, or do they have separate calendars for each course? Each course will have. You see the different because of okay. Let me now you see the green color, right? So that means it's just specifically for their class. And I leave the student view. I see all different colors. That means I'm seeing it for all different classes. But then I, my student look at it, they see only for their assignments. And I know that a lot of faculty members prefer to create their um, you know, tentative schedule outline. And so this day we are gonna discuss about this and they already create their assignment prior to the semester start. So it'll be more eventful for a lot of faculty members, but I'm not that person. I don't do that. So um, that's why you don't see a multicolors, a spectrum. But for many faculty members, they will have colors all over the place because they are ready um, prior to everything and they have their things all prepared and very well arranged, distributed, um, really good. But I'm not that person. I have to work on it. I know I'm not bragging. Uh, so Sri, let me make sure I understand this. So if I'm a student and I'm taking psych and accounting and physics, I don't, I don't have any calendar where I see all of the material for those courses in one place. No, if you are using Canvas, you will see different colors. So you're- Okay, so I will, see, I will see all of my, all of my different courses will be on one calendar and they'll be color coded just the way the faculty calendar is. Exactly, exactly. Okay, great, thanks. I'd like to say it's really important that students understand they choose the color based on their tile from the dashboard. So before I recognized that, I made some colors on the tiles. Um, I turned them white so that I could see the image really clear. And then I was like, where did the calendar entries go? Well, you can't see them because the white background. So you can mess yourself up. <laughs> Are there any other questions for Sheree? The calendar is, is just a powerful tool and really the uh, inbox and that community is a powerful communication tool as well, so. And I like the way the calendar is so prominently placed. I mean, Blackboard, I didn't even know there was. <clears throat> um, something else that I'd like to add to that is I was working with a fac faculty member yesterday and reviewing their course and you know, the, the big thing, and I'm sure, and, and just to emphasize, the calendar is really not for you. It's for your students. It's for your students to be able to know where they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to do, and when they're supposed to do it. So, you know, use due dates, uh, because this will really make life easier on your students when you're doing assignments, when you're doing quizzes, all that stuff. It just is a great way to, so your students know where they're supposed to be and when. Now my lecture is over, thank you. <laughs> no, um, I'll no, you made a really good point because, you know, sometimes we forget to See the most important thing from the student perspective. I'm like, okay, I'll have all the colors. And then Susan brought up the question of how will the student see? I'm like, huh, how will the student see? I have to look at it. And then, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, this is really specifically for students because we know what we have to do, but bringing them to the same page and to just let them know that, hey, you have something coming up. Because I don't do the online assignments a lot. I will tell them that on this particular day, your exam will be available for 30 minutes or 40 minutes. You better finish it up, otherwise you will end up with zero. But I don't have to create that prior to the assignment date. I don't want to because last semester, when I created the assignment, I made the file available. Although I didn't publish it, my students were able to see from the cloud and they already knew the exam that was really scary. So I learned my lesson. Um, I think Canvas fixed that, but I don't want to take a chance. 
I will not make it available at least like five minutes before the exam. So they will not even see. If I create a window that, hey, there is an exam coming up, they will see that, but it will show not available. But then five minutes before, I just publish everything so that uh, they will see it in their calendar and things like that. But I don't uh, do create PowerPoints or anything. I just teach them in class and then post that particular PDF um in their lecture session i can just walk you through like my very simple course like john physics one and i have all my announcements that you can really pick how many announcements they want to see and then i have all the pages merged here so when they click each page they will have their lecture knowledge or lecture recordings or solutions or rubrics and everything on the front page, but I know that you can go through buttons, uh, what do you call button factory? Um, I haven't I haven't gone that far yet. I did that on my first Canvas pilot course. I did that, uh, but I just want it to be like very white and clear and transparent, very simple, um, because we are all teaching virtual and students use computer from their home. I don't want their home page to be taking a lot of time to open and you have too many tools and it will take forever. Uh, so I made it very simple. Last call for questions and comments. Quickly, um, for your office hours, I guess you have a, do you have a Zoom link when you set it up? So when they click on the calendar, it shows up with that Zoom link for them to and also I created that as my uh, announcement. Up there. They will yeah. see that in their homepage. Okay. And and then, the, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, sorry. No, no, I say um, they have two different Zoom links, one for the class and one for the, the office hours. And I explain everything to them on the first day. But then you will have one or two students that will never, you know, like, okay, whatever, when it comes to me, I'll know. But then I know that a couple of students, they still click my classroom office, I mean, um, lecture session Zoom link for office hours. I just wait for them to figure out. I'll be there. Uh, I'm like, I'll wait. You figure that out because we already talked about it. And if you go to the home page, you should be able to see all different things separated and made it clear. And I'll wait for them to figure that out. Okay. Cool. Um, thank you. And then I noticed in the in the email, you can actually record an audio or a video. I thought that was kind of cool. So yeah. if I don't feel like typing, I can just talk. You don't want to type. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like it's whatever you want to Yeah. Careful. This is cool. Thank you, Shri. Thank you. Well. That might be that might be a wrap. I think so. Thank you, Shri. We really appreciate it. Shri was one of the first people on board with. She met with Canvas the very first time they came to campus. That probably two years ago. So she's been she's a long time Canvas user. Thank you for taking time today. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.